annual gathering of the Sherman Citizens Town Caucus together. Uh, my name is George Fisk. I'm one of two members of the caucus committee. The other is Jan Walsh. As some of you uh, may remember from last year, uh, <clears throat> we did have a third member, Rick Phillips, who had served on here, but Rick, uh, for uh, reasons, uh, stepped down as a member of the caucus committee. Uh, we are ably assisted tonight by Jennifer Bethel, who is here, and um, she's going to be helping with a, a number of the matters which I will get to shortly. I would like to read the caucus call. Once I find it. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter 53 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and amendments thereto, if any, a caucus of the registered voters of the town of Sherwood, Massachusetts, is hereby called to be held at the 1858 Townhouse, Sherwood, Massachusetts, on Thursday, March 3, 2016, at 8 p.m. for the purpose of nominating candidates for the various town offices to be filled at the annual town election. <clears throat> for the election of officers to be held uh, on uh, Tuesday, May 10th, 2016, to elect the town caucus committee and to transact any other business that may really come for the meeting. The meeting will be called to order by a member of the town committee, and the checklist of registered voters will be used. Uh, I will tell you, we're, we're experimenting here with a new sound system that the community center uh, is fortunate enough to have. Um, yeah, one of the things that it does allow for, and I know Pat is working to try to adjust it properly. I'm hearing a little feedback. I don't know if you yeah. are. Everybody said, well, hopefully we can work through that. We will experiment. Yes. Yeah. 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 I will go through with the procedures, but um, uh, we have we have a few things that we typically do. The first, frankly, is to is to thank once again the, the uh, Community Center Foundation for the use of this hall. It's a, it's a wonderful gathering uh, place, and we're so fortunate to all be able to come here for gatherings such as this. And, and I also want to commend so many people for coming out tonight. I suspect there might be a few reasons why there's a large crowd, but we'll find out as the evening progresses. Um, I would like to introduce, as we have done in the last few years, uh, two members, student uh, board members of the Community uh, Center Foundation, and they would each like to share uh, some words with you. Um, the, uh, the first is Klaus um, Wiemeyer, who um, I, I met Klaus this evening. I met his mother. I know they're relatively new to Sherburn, um, uh, living on Mill Street, as I understand. And Klaus is one of uh, uh, two Board members are here tonight. I believe he's a sophomore at Voter Sherwood. So, Klaus, I would welcome you. Thank you, Mr. Fisk, for your kind introduction and good evening. My name is Klaus Wiemeyer, and I am a student director here at the Sherwood Community Center. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the 2016 Sherwood Town Park. Tonight's venue is located at one of Sherwin's finest and most historic buildings. It was built in 1858, and after 158 years of existence, it continues to thrive as a gathering place for all members of our community. 1858 is the home of our community. It offers many meaningful and worthwhile events, and um, the Sherwin Community Center Foundation is the organization that manages and maintains this building. The Sherwood Community Center receives no support from Sherwood taxes and only from donations and from events. Since the start of the Sherwood, the Sherwood Student Director Program, we have worked to create a series of events that are geared towards high school students. Our mission is to provide high school students with a fun, safe, and substance-free place to hang out. Um, we offer many enjoyable and engaging activities. Some of these activities include dances, movie nights, game nights, and live high school musical performances. 
Now I would like to uh, take this opportunity to send a thank you to our volunteers and to our donors. Um, it is through your generosity that we can share this wonderful place with all of our community. I'm proud to be part of this organization and this community. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce to you Kristen Kushi. Thank you, Klaus. And again, my name is Kristen Bucci, and I am also a student director here at the Sherburne Community Center. And I'd like to take a moment to reflect upon the Sherburne Community Center's mission statement. This states, to promote a sense of community by ensuring that this community center is available to and used by Sherburne groups and organizations at minimal or no cost, and to fund, preserve, maintain, and schedule the use of this historic building. Tonight, I am proud to report that after more than 28 years since the foundation was formed, they continue to fulfill this mission statement. We truly are a place for everyone. I am proud to be a part of this organization and in making this a better place for the young people in our town. But it takes all of us to make sure we're great. In order to improve our community, it would take all of your help. We need you to attend, to volunteer, to help plan, to offer your talents, and to give of your treasure in creating the events that help transform a town into a community and build a house into a home. The Sherman Student Directors also run the Vote and Donate Food Drive for a place to turn. This week, this food drive collected about a thousand pounds of food for the charity. This is a huge amount. And we'd like to thank all of you who brought in food to support the charity. Please bring these non-perishable food items with you when you vote on the May 10th town election or the November 8th presidential election. The hungry need your help and your donations. Thank you all for coming for tonight's town caucus and participating in this important political process. I wish all the candidates luck tonight and thank you all for your commitment in making Sherburn great. Thank you.
like you to take note uh, now and through the evening. There are some important dates that are listed on the sheet. I think it's the lower left-hand side. And um, that, will, <coughs> that will indicate certain deadlines that the town clerk uh, has to meet with filing of uh, acceptance of those who are elected this evening and also for those who are taking out nominating, uh, nomination papers afterward. There may very well be some of you to do that. Um, the process is very straightforward. We will go through these list of positions. Uh, any position where we, we, and we, I will call on nominations. And <clears throat> if there is somebody who would like to make a, nominate, a nomination for each of these positions, I would ask you to do as Janet did and Jennifer did and step to the microphone indicate who you are and who you're nominating. And, uh, and then I will, if, if the person you're nominating is here, I will ask them to raise a hand or stand just so we can perhaps have a chance to see who you all are. And uh, once we've gone through that process, after you make the nomination, I will simply ask if the nominator would like to say a few words on your behalf. Uh, we'd like to limit it, if we could, to a couple of minutes, um, because we do have a lot we want to we get through, but I don't want to uh, cut you short either. Uh, we would hope that your comments would pertain to your candidates, qualifications, and the reasons why you feel he or she would suit the job well. Um, if, there, uh, if it's uncontested, we will go to a voice vote and move on. If there is a situation where we find it's a contested race, meaning we have more than the, the people running for an office or there aren't enough spots for all of you. Um, it will, we will turn to the ballot, and I will, I will explain at that juncture what we do. But you will be, um, you will be voting on the ballot. My tellers over here uh, will perhaps be busy this evening. They will be collecting the ballots after they vote. And uh, we will take a, a, a recess as they count the votes once they've completed their work. Uh, I will announce. Uh, I will announce the results, and uh, hopefully we will have caucus nominees for each of the various positions that are coming open this year. Um, Sue Anderson, as our clerk, will be up here, and when somebody is nominated, she will place that person's name on this board with a number next to it. So, for example, when we get to a situation where it is, or it is contested. And we've got perhaps five people running for two spots. Um, we'll have numbers next to those five people. And if you happen to think person number two and person number four are the ones you would like to vote for, that would be you would write that on your ballot, and we'll collect them, and we'll start to count. So I'll go through this again, but um, as if we get to that situation. I will move on now to the first position uh, on your list of town moderator. It is a one-year term, and the incumbent is Coralinda Lincoln, and I would ask if there are any nominations for a town moderator. Good evening, George. How are you? How are you? I'm Kitty Circus from Hunting Lane, and it's my pleasure to place Corey Lincoln's name in the uh, Nomination for moderator. And Corey, I think I saw. Raise your hand. Thank you, Corey. Are there any other nominations for town moderator? <coughs> Would you like to say anything on her behalf? I'll try to do 30 seconds. Uh, Corey, as you know, uh, runs our town meeting, which she does very professionally and fairly. She also port, uh, appoints members of the advisory committee. And this committee is very important to the running of the finances of the town. And we've been very fortunate for at least the last 10 years that Corey has made some very outstanding appointments. And then I believe she also appoints the associate member, associate member of the planning board. And there's several other things she has responsibility for. And I thank Corey for the job she's done so far. Very good. <coughs> There is only one uh, nominee, Corey, so at this point I would ask uh, that we uh, take a, a, a motion that the nomination be closed and the clerk cast one ballot for Corey Lincoln and send the 
from Northeastern University. Sean and his wife, Christina, have three kids who are all currently students at Pine Hill. Sean owns a residential construction company in Sherburn that specializes in remodeling and restoration of historic homes and barns as well as new construction. He is an active tenure member of the Sherburn Fire Department and has been a lieutenant on the force since 2011. He's also a member of the Fire Rescue Association and has volunteered at their events for town as such as the 4th of July parade and field games and the fall barbecues. Sean has also served as an appointed member of the Traffic Safety Committee, the Public Safety Committee, Pine Hill Capital Committee, the CMD Building Committee, and the West Chennai Intersection Committee. Sean also volunteered a tremendous amount of time and energy in 2015 to rebuilding the Sherman Playground. Sean is completing his one year term as a member of the Board of Selectmen. As you all know, this is the first year of a five member board which has been operating efficiently and without major issues between the current members. Sean works well with the other members of the board and has been instrumental in making progress on many issues, including health insurance and the general chemical contamination. So I ask you to join me in supporting Sean Killeen as the caucus nominee for board of directors so he can continue to represent the next generation of Sherman residents and continue his work as an excellent example of service to his community. Thanks very much. Well, we will proceed to a uh, secret ballot vote. <clears throat> you should have received your ballot. And if you would, if you would tear off the top, A, so we will use A. And um, now, pencils are being passed around. If you don't have a pencil or a pen, um, we will have them available. And as you can see, um, Lanny Rubin is identified as number one, Mike Yamo two, and Sean Colleen three. You may vote up to two. You don't have to vote for two. You don't have to vote for any. But you know, if you vote for three, your ballot will be validated. So by voting for um, the two candidates, please write the number, not the name, the number on the ballot. And we will recognize you. Know, Rock, you know, two front or back? Makes no difference. Front or back? We're going to give you the option. Uh, before I uh, before I give you um, the tally, I do want to mention uh, that not just in this instance, but in any of these positions, if any of you uh, are interested in running for office, whether you run tonight and lost, or did not run tonight but still would like to. Um, you know, taking out papers is an option for you. The other thing I want to mention, just for uh, the sake of the caucus committee, is that it's very important for those of you who are here, uh, Corey's already indicated that she has signed her acceptance. So Jennifer Bethel, you know, who is here, will be running around uh, trying to catch those people who've been uh, elected as caucus nominees tonight, and we would like very much to get your signature of acceptance. Um, we need to turn that into the town clerk no later than 5 o'clock Monday, and uh, it's much easier for us if you, if, if you can do that for us tonight rather than having us chase you on the weekend. So having said that, the, um, the results uh, of this election are as follows. For Lanny Rubin, 58 votes. For Mike Giamo, 149 votes. And for Sean Colleen, 131 votes. So that is, um, it's a congratulations to Mike and Sean. And um, Lanny will, I guess, make the decisions to whether he wants to take out papers. That's, that's his call. So congratulations to them. And we would hope that they would each sign the sheet I was talking about before the evening is over. Uh, let's move on to the, uh, the collector. The incumbent is Nick Nancy. Has, I just want to make a quick comment. We, <coughs> Nancy has been the tax collector for some time. Uh, I, I just would comment that I've been talking with her and also with town clerk. And uh, the role of uh, the tax collector uh, has been expanded somewhat recently in that uh, there's more than, uh, certainly taxes have been collected, but there are other fees which she is somewhat responsible for as well. So, um, now, having said that, Jean. Jean Rosso from Casey Hello. And it's my pleasure and my honor to nominate Nancy Hess of Main Street from the Office of Collector. Nancy, would you like to raise your hand? Thank you. 
Are there any other nominations for collector? Would you like to say something on your case? Yes, you want to say it? Okay. I've worked with Nancy closely for over 20 years as a former member of the Board of Assessors. Uh, she, you could not find a better candidate, a more qualified person for collector than I have been. Nancy has years of positive experience. She's trustworthy. She's knowledgeable. She's competent. And she's a positive influence on our town's financial team. She knows the people of the town and is a great help to residents when they have financial issues. Please vote for Nancy. I thank you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I will entertain a motion and nomination to be close. A clerk cast one ballot. Oh, for close. Close. Second. Thank you very much. On the favor, please say aye. Aye. Close. Congratulations, Nancy. Sign the sheet. Uh, <laughs> Town Treasurer uh, Heather Peck is the incumbent. I will entertain nominations. Joe Meany, Woodland Street. I'm happy to nominate Heather Peck for treasurer. And Heather is here somewhere. There she is. Thank you, Heather. Are there any other nominations for treasurer? Joe, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Heather's family moved to Sherman in 1983. After graduating from um, Babson College, Heather has been in the financial world for the last 25 years, working for Arthur Anderson, Investors Bank and Trust Company, Bain Capital, Grove Street Advisors, before launching her own bookkeeping company for small businesses, and balancing her professional career with that of rearing three sons. In addition to serving on the Sherman School Committee for six years, Heather has been in the treasurer's office since 2010. She served five years as assistant treasurer under Pete Holtman and has been the elected treasurer since last May. I have worked with Heather in her capacity as treasurer, particularly on borrowing and debt service for the renovations of the Woodhaven Elder Housing, and I found her to be most helpful, accessible, and concerned for the town's best interests. She's an asset to our town. I'm going to ask you to vote for her. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I hear a motion to nominations. We closed and the clerk cast one ballot for head of bank. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving on to assessors. This, uh, this is a, needs a little bit of explanation in the uh, Ken McDonough is the uh, incumbent, and that's a three-year term. Um, we will be uh, voting on somebody for that. Uh, there were, uh, over the course of the last several months, uh, a couple of resignations uh, from that board, uh, but more recently there were, there were two people who have been appointed by uh, uh, boards, uh, the selectmen with the uh, with the board involved in this instance, the Board of Assessors, have the authority to appoint an interim person to serve in that role, but only until the next election, no matter what the length of the term is. The two people have been appointed recently to serve in that role with Ken until the town election. So we will be taking each one individually because they're different terms. The, the first, as I say, is a three-year incumbent, Ken McDonough. And I would um, ask if there are any nominations for that three-year term. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. I'm pleased to nominate Drew Cashel. Drew Cashel has been nominated for the three-year term for assessor. Are there any other nominations? Would you like to say a few words about Drew? So I'm pleased to nominate Drew. Drew stepped forward at a time when the town was really in need of somebody on the assessor's board. And he's fairly new to town. He got here, moved here in 2012. He's an attorney in private practice. He was previously licensed as a CPA. Um, he is now serving on the board in an interim capacity until May. 
Um, and he's pleased to volunteer, and we're really pleased to have somebody who's new to town step forward like this to a very important position. Thank you. Drew, would you stay to raise your hand so people can see you? Thank you. If there are no other nominations, and there are not, I would uh, entertain a motion the nomination to be closed. The clerk cast one ballot for Drew Kershaw. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, congratulations, Drew. And now we have a, 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 a two-year term. We need to try to see if there are going to be nominations for that. I see somebody stepping up to the microphone. I nominate Michael Goldstein of Whitney Street. And who might you be, Jack? I'm sort of a line still at Mason Hill. <laughs> Uh, Michael Goldstein has been nominated for the two-year term on the Board of Assessors. Are there any other nominations? Jennifer, did you want to say anything on his behalf? Michael and his wife, Joanna Pratt, moved to, make, uh, to Sherborne about 15 years ago. They've got a daughter. He's in the schools. Michael has a um, great financial acumen. He's a finance professor at Babson College and has served on several town committees. Um, and I think he'd make a wonderful choice. Thank you. Um, I would ask Michael to stand up, but he uh, lives in Australia. Yes. So, uh, and probably, are you going to sit down? No, I um, So, we have, we have one candidate, uh, Michael Goldstein. Uh, is there a motion that, the clerk, uh, that we close the nomination to clerk cast one ballot? Or, 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 second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. The big question is, do we now have any nominations for the one-year term? I will tell you, I've spoken to some people about this and hoping that we might be persuasive and apparently have not been. So we are going to uh, pass over this, but um, I would encourage you all to think long and hard about somebody, maybe yourself, who would, uh, you believe, be a good person to serve in that role. It's all of the roles in town are important, but uh, the Board of Assessors is as important as any of these, and it's incumbent on us to fill these positions. So think long and hard about this. I know that the caucus committee will be. So we will move ahead with that as a vacant position for a couple of caucus. Situation. Moving on to the Sherman School Committee, there are two incumbents, Frank Hess and Frank Hook. It's a three-year term for two positions. Are there any nominations for the school committee, local school committee? Doug Brody Kerr Street, I nominate Jack Stillman. Zach? S B I L S B I L S B I L S B I Zach, I saw, I talked to Zach earlier. There he is, Zach's in the back. Thank you, Zach. Hi. Are there other nominations? Hi, I'm Jenny Chang, 24 Rasa Hill. I nominate George Camphouse, K-A-N-P-H-A-U-S. George is here. I saw the hand earlier. He was, thank you, George. Hi, Amy Kozlowski, Lake Street. I nominate Jennifer Devin. Jennifer Devin. Other nominations? Hi, Ann Hubby, Wood Road, and I nominate Kate Potter. It's an easy last name. Kate Potter. Are there other nominations? Is that Kate? Is Kate here? Kate, yes. Did I ask Jennifer? Jennifer, I thought you were there. You go. There you are. Thank you. Are there other nominations? Well, we have another situation where we have a, a contested uh, 
and positions up for the local school committee, so we will once again go to the ballot. And as you might suspect, B. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, Doug, why don't you speak first? <laughs> That is a UMass Amherst Business Administration graduate who has the purest doctorate from Suffolk Law. He's married to Katrina Johnson and has two children of Pine Hill, Daniel in third grade and Jacob in first grade. He's actually in the Marine Corps as a judge advocate from 2007 to 2014. His assignments include prosecuting and defending service members at courts martial duty as a Special Assistant United States Attorney and Combat Service in Afghanistan in 2010 and 2011. Zach today is a major in the Marine Corps Reserve and an attorney in private practice. His priorities for the school committee are smaller class sizes and fiscal responsibility. He believes that the most important resource in our school are classroom teachers, and with classes reaching 25 students earlier this school year, he is concerned about the ability of those teachers to provide the important and necessary individualized attention. At the same time, he is also concerned about town finances and our escalating property taxes. It is evident that the Pine Hill student population is growing faster than our town's budget. The student enrollment next year is projected to be larger, since not the largest since 2010. If this trend continues, the school committee has some tough choices ahead. Zach's legal education and military experience make him ideal for the job. He knows how to ask tough questions, find creative solutions, and balance students' needs with the realities of the town budget. Zach recognizes the need for a sustainable approach that is small class size and fiscal responsibility. I urge you to join me in supporting Zachary Spillman for the Chevron School Committee. Thank you. Thanks, Hi, good evening. Uh, George Kemphouse, he's my husband, and he's a great dad. We have two children. Uh, at Piney Hill, Kelly Kemphouse and Vivian Kemphouse, second and fourth graders. So George has been a very um, actively volunteer at school. Um, he's a classroom parent uh, for both of our children. So being new in Sherborne, we moved here only in August last year. Uh, doesn't stop George from um, wanting to getting actively involved in our children's education and his desire to volunteer and contribute to the excellence of Sherman schools. His background, George is a PhD in biomedical research. He did his postdoc at Beth Israel Hospital and he became a full-time research scientist at Biogen. He's experienced as a PhD research scientist or as I call it, a professional student. He understands the importance of good education I believe with his experience, he can bring strong analytical problem-solving skill set to this role and a voice of reason. Uh, in 2012, he has joined my dental practices as an operation manager uh, with the three offices at the time. He understands the importance of physical responsibility, budget analysis for the success of a company, uh, creating viable long-term strategy. He believes in careful, carefully monitor, allocate, control school budget is an integral part of allowing our school to achieve many goals we want to accomplish for our children. As a committee member, he will strive to continue the excellence of the school as a priority to hire, develop, support the best teachers, to attain the best student-teacher ratio, create strong curriculum, and to prepare our children for best educational experience. Please join me to support my husband, George Kemphouse, to be the school committee member. Thank you. I'm nominating Jennifer Devin for a seat on the Sherburne School Committee. Jennifer and her family have lived in Sherburne for nine years, and they were one of the first families that we met over six years ago when my family moved here. Jennifer and her husband are both BC graduates and moved to Sherburne to raise their family. She is very committed to her family, education, and her community. She has experience in education, serving as both a preschool teacher and an art educator, before becoming a full-time mom to her four boys, ages four through nine. Jennifer is a very active Pine Hill parent. For the past two years, she has served on the Pine Hill School Advisory Committee, which works closely with school administration, teachers, and community members to address 
important issues within our school. She is also one of the two Pine Hill parent coordinators for the Challenge Success Program, a district-wide initiative to rethink what student success means. Jennifer and her family serve as a co-host family for the Metco program, and she also actively volunteers within the school. In addition to these roles, she is also a member of the statewide advocacy group, Citizens for Public Schools. I believe that Jennifer would make a great addition to the Sherburne School Committee because she is passionate and knowledgeable about our educational system, committed to supporting research-based, <coughs> developmentally appropriate best practices within the school system, and supporting a healthy school environment for every single Pine Hill student. She is approachable and eager to make sure our school is the best place for our children at Pine Hill, as well as supporting a responsible fiscal budget for the town of Sherburne. Thank you. Kate Potter brings a wealth of experience, both as a teacher and as an active town of Pine Hill volunteer. Experiencing elementary school from three different perspectives, teacher, volunteer, and parent, provides her with an invaluable perspective that will enable the Sherman School Committee to move forward and see positive change in a sustainable manner. Kate has lived in Sherman for 10 years. She and her husband, James, have three children, a daughter in eighth grade, a son in sixth, and a son in second grade. All three of the two children have or still attend Pine Hill. With this longevity, Kate is facing her understanding of Pine Hill on experience. This understanding of the unique nature of the town of Sherman and the special qualities that make Pine Hill such a wonderful school is essential if we want to maintain what we love about Pine Hill and our town. Kate graduated from Hamilton College. She earned her master's in curriculum and instruction from Teachers College of Columbia University and taught grades K through five in both public and private schools for over 10 years up until the birth of her daughter and remains certified to teach grades K through five in the state of Massachusetts. While teaching, she served as a staff representative for her school's CSA and worked collaborative, collaboratively with her principal and staff members on a committee focused on teaching reading and writing. Kate's strength lies in her ability to collaborate and be a positive contributor. While serving on the Friends of the Sherman Library Board as the children's coordinator, Kate worked with the Friends Board and the library trustees in the beginning phases of the library's expansion project. Although the project was complex and met with opposition, and um, and even experienced a few setbacks, Kate maintained her focus on what was best for the library, and especially for the children of Sherburn. In her three years as the METCO liaison for the Pine Hill CSA, Kate has enjoyed working closely with the DS and METCO director and the students and families in that program. There are students from Boston who attend our schools. Kate also works with the Dover Sherburn Middle and High School students of their METCO program as the liaison and program coordinator. This experience highlights Kate's ability to work with people from many different backgrounds and to listen to their needs and hopes. Being the Metro Liaison for Pine Hill and Dover Sherman Middle and High School illustrates Kate's passion for allowing every student to receive the best possible education available to them. Recently, Kate joined the Sherman Benevolent Society as the Pine Hill representative. And I am excited to see so much interest in the future of our children and our school. I know Kate Potter has the skills, the interest, experience, and perspective to help make sure that our children continue to receive the best possible education, the best possible school that we can provide. Okay, uh, let's proceed now to the ballot. And again, as we did with the selecting race, you can vote for up to two candidates, no more than. And uh, simply by choosing the candidate you'd like, please put down the number next to that candidate's name. I have been asked if, if unless you feel compelled to, to fold your ballot, it's much easier, much quicker if you're willing. This is a Doug Burton special to keep the ballot flat. So if you can avoid folding, if you feel comfortable, that's a big help. Results are as follows. Zach Stoneman, 64 votes. George Campus, 62 votes. Jennifer Devin, 73 votes. Kate Potter, 112 votes. <laughs> so again, congratulations to the two who uh, were uh, elected as uh, caucus nominees tonight. And please 
see Jennifer before we are done. Jennifer Bethel, who is here somewhere, and sign, uh, sign your acceptance, presuming you guys know what you'd like to do. And we are going to keep moving here. The next position, uh, the next uh, board is the Trustees of Solomon Academy. We actually have, we have two positions. Um, the first is a five-year, um, Barb Gaskin is the incumbent. It's a five-year term, and I would look for nominations for a five-year term, let's say. Are you? Leslie Barnett, 45 Street. I would like to nominate Dave Welch. David Welch has been nominated for five for the five-year term on the trustee of Sun Academy. Are there any other nominations for the five-year position? Is David here? There he is waiting, his hand back there. Thank you. And Leslie, would you like to say a few words? This, um, a brief description about the Solomon Academy Fund. Uh, it was established in 1871, and an endowment was left to the town of Sherburne to support the local school by Martha Solomon. A committee of five elected members oversees the management of the funds and decides on the distribution amount that's made each year, and meets, um, the committee meets with the principal of Pine Hill School to learn about the enrichment programs that the fund supports. Uh, I'd like to nominate Dave Welch as trustee for the Solomon Academy Fund. Dave and his family have lived in Sherman for over 10 years, and during that time, he served on the board of directors for ECDC as treasurer and Pine Hills CSA as co-president. He is also currently serving on the board of the 200 Foundation based in Framingham. Dave owns a small business that provides leadership development and management skills training to various organizations in Massachusetts. Previously, Dave worked with Fidelity Investments for nearly 17 years. Dave currently has a fourth and sixth grader in the local schools and they're actively involved in various endeavors supporting the community. This fall, Dave volunteered time to assist with the Pine Hill 5K as well as building the new Sherburn Playground. Dave's background makes him an ideal candidate for the Solomon Academy Fund Board and I am honored to nominate him for this position. I will entertain a motion the nominations be closed and the cast on the ballot for David Welch. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 As opposed, congratulations, David. See Jennifer Bethel, there she is. <laughs> on the job. Um, we have one other position on the uh, on the uh, Trustee of Song Academy. Ellen Stone had served, there was a resignation. Was there ever an interim person? Oh, no. Okay. So, do we have a nomination for that position? Yes. Less than where to I'd like to nominate Ann Whitlock. Ann Whitlock. Are there any other nominations? Okay, and Ann Whitlock, would you raise your hand there? I see you in the room. Thank you very much. And would you like to say something about Ann? Uh, Anne and her husband Pete have enjoyed living in Sherburne for almost 11 years. They have two active children who currently attend Pine Hill School. Over the past few years, Anne has volunteered in a number of different capacities at many of the valuable organizations within town. Anne is on the Pine Hill CSA board and currently co-chair of uh, the enrichment program at Pine Hill, which has earned a uh, far-reaching reputation for offering inventive, hands-on, and meaningful educational initiatives that enhance the core curricula of the school. In addition to her enrichment responsibilities, she helped with the auction, the annual 5K run, and has acted as real parent. Anne is also an active member of the Sherman Bargain Club, Friends of the Sherman Library, and her local church. Before moving to Sherman, Anne worked at a Boston-based financial services company for 10 years and lived in Charlestown. Anne's background also makes her an ideal candidate for the Solomon Academy Fund Board, and I'm also uh, honored to nominate her for this position. Thank you, Miss. I'm entertaining a motion that the nominations be closed and that I put the first one out for Anne Whitlock. Second. 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 All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, congratulations. Thank you. Moving on to library trustees. There are three positions. It's a three-year term. And uh, 
I will entertain nominations at this time. Uh, Jim Murphy, 44 Granville Road, and I would like to nominate Stacy Grant. And is Stacy here tonight? <laughs> and Stacy, would you like to make a nominee? Yes, Stacy Brandon, Deerfield Road. I would like to nominate Christina Hallmay. And it's Christina. She is. There she is. All right. And are there any other nominations? Yes, Stacy Brandon, Deerfield Road. And I would like to nominate Brian Connolly for Library Trustees. Brian Connolly. And he's Brian. Also here. Brian. Brian, I had a nice talk with you on the phone. Are there any other nominations? Would you like Jim to speak? Stacy? Uh, please join me in supporting Stacy Graham for our fifth three year term as library trustee. <clears throat> Since she moved here in 1995 with her husband Mark and two sons, Stacy has willingly shared her considerable talents with the community, and particularly the library. Given the lack of a contested election, I won't list all the committees that she's been on before, and I just want to point out the reality between, uh, that behind whatever the resume would be, is that for the library, Stacy has really been our true champion. She has been the public face and unstoppable force that took the, the idea of our library renovation and has brought it thus far to the cusp of its reality, with smile, grit, determination, vision, Innumerable meetings and gatherings, she's inspired both the library and the trustees and the town to be at their best, to be open, creative, giving, and smart. We need Stacy back as a, as a library trustee, and I'm so honored to be on the same board with her. Stacy? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, for this very kind words. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to nominate Christina Almey for Library Trustee tonight. Christina is already serving on the Board of Library Trustees as she was appointed to fill a vacant spot on the board at the end of last year. She's been a wonderful addition to the group, and we are very happy that she, even with this limited exposure, has decided to run for the full term now that she's eligible for it. Christina and her husband John have lived in Sherburne since 2000. Their children are currently in the DS schools. Their son is a sophomore at the high school and they're an eighth grader in middle school. Christina is a professional graphic designer and enjoys fine arts painting. Christina joined the Friends of the Library in 2006 in the role of Arts and Crafts Fair co-chair and continued in that role for three years. And we all know how important that role is to the town. Over the years, she's also volunteered in town for newcomers, Pine Hill Arts, Artworks Program, participated in another Pine Hill School Parent Volunteer Opportunities. She's been a member and board member of the Sherman Garden Club for years, and she's currently a board member of the Dover Sherman Education Fund. Please nominate, or please uh, vote for Christina Almey for Library Trustee. And? and Brian Connolly and his wife Melissa moved to Sherman in 1998 and have two children currently in the DS school system. As a family, they have been heavy users of the library and enjoyed many of the programs offered. Brian has a career working as an executive in large global financial service companies in both strategy and operating positions. In Sherburne, he has coached soccer and basketball in town programs. Brian has also served as board chair of the Eastside Mount Hope YMCA in Providence and led the building of a new facility on shared property with the city of Providence. He has served as a board member of the Greater Providence YMCA. He has also served as a board member of two privately owned companies. Most importantly, however, Brian's mother was a librarian in a town in Illinois about the same size as Sherman. She instilled in him a keen appreciation of how much of a difference a good library can make in a community, and we are very excited about him seeking election to the board. Please vote for Brian. Thank you. I hear a motion to nominations and close the clerk cast one ballot for each of the nominees. Say aye. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. As opposed, congratulations to all three. Moving on to water commissioner are the nominations. The incumbent is Roger Denver. Are there any other nominations for water commission? Uh, 
Vermont is long-term resident. It's uh, hard to describe all he's done for the town. He exemplifies what citizen volunteerism is all about in the small community. Served us well, and I encourage you all to vote for him. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion the nomination to be closed. Eric cast one ballot for Roger Denmark. Second, I'll in favor, please say aye. Aye. As opposed, thank you. Moving on. Cemetery Commissioner. Chucky Blaney is the incumbent. Are there any nominations? I think I see one coming. Hi, Susan Tyler. I'd like to nominate Chucky Blaney. Second. Chucky Blaney has been nominated for Cemetery Commissioner for a three-year term. Are there any other nominations? Given that, Susan, would you like to share a few words? Given the uh, hour, I'll just quick here. Yeah. Uh, I've been uh, had the pleasure of knowing Chucky Blaney for quite a few years, but I've had an even greater pleasure working with her as a cemetery commissioner for the last year. She brings a wealth of knowledge to the town, um, and she is wonderful with what she knows and the work that she does at the cemetery. So the gentleman is on you. Thank you very much. Entertain a motion. The uh, nomination be closed. The clerk casts one ballot for Chucky Blaney. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. As opposed, Chucky, once again, congratulations. Oh, yeah, I should have had to raise your hand. Nobody knows who's doing <laughs> Okay, uh, planning board. Uh, two incumbents, it's for a three year term, the two positions. Uh, John Higley and Eric Johnson are the incumbents. Eric. Eric Johnson, Snow Street. I'd like to nominate John Higley. John Haley has been nominated uh, for planning board. Are there any other nominations? Mary. Uh, Mary and I at 25 Prospect Street. Uh, on behalf of myself and John Haley, I'd like to nominate Abby Mae Weiss. Thank you. Uh, I know John is not here. He's a bit under the weather. Abby is. Here's Abby. Are there other nominations for planning board? Uh, Eric, did you want to say something about John? John's been on the planning board for six years, for two terms, and for five of those years he serves as a chair. His tenure as a uh, chair for the vast majority of his terms is not by accident. He's demonstrated leadership skills and willing to work diligently between meetings to advance planning board projects such as a town center report and ensure his general plan. <coughs> I've served with him during his tenure, and I can tell you, I've always had full confidence that John fairly represents the board when he presents before other town boards and committees. John regularly is engaged with planning overall. He, he regularly attends regional planning, alternative transportation, and conservation meetings. He's involved with um, trail conservation and forestry projects. He's a very strong advocate for bicycle and pedestrian-friendly streets. You can see him riding all over them. He's also an advocate of smart growth and preservation of open space. He supports the creation of a long-term vision of Sherbin as a regional oasis to guide decision-making as Sherbin and our entire region involves. In addition to being the chairman of the planning board, he's a member of the Energy Committee and on the board of the Upper Charles Conservation Land Trust. He and his wife, Susan, have lived in town for 25 years. The three children have gone through Pine Hill and Dover Sherbin. John's business career is technology-based startups, including air and groundwater remediation, and occasion to coach his stuff. And Eric, thank you for your service on the board. I know you've been a valuable member. So thank you. Uh, Mary. I'm sorry to see Eric leave. But we are nominating a, a potential new member of the planning board, uh, Eddie May Weiss. Eddie May is relatively new to politics in Sherbourne, although she's not new to Sherbourne. She's lived there for over 10 years. Uh, we're nominating her because we seen her to be thoughtful, fair-minded, a very quick study, and uh, definitely proven to be a very hard worker and committed to the town. Uh, Abby May graduated from University of from, uh, Vermont in political science and English, and uh, interned with the Vermont Public Defender's Office. Uh, she was on a paralegal in New York for two years. Uh, she and her husband have been in Sherburne for over 10 years. As I said, they have two children in Pine Hill School. Uh, she runs a small business. She's active in the Sherburne Business Association and a member of the Grants Committee that distributes uh, funds to uh, deserving Sherburne projects. 
She's uh, been on the Friends of the Sherman Library and was president of that for a year. But most recently, and uh, what uh, stands out is that she's recently been leader of the Citizens Action Committee that has worked extremely hard to keep the town and the committees of the town and everyone else informed about the facts and issues of the uh, Fields of Sherburne Affordable Housing Project. Uh, this is a single project, but it's uh, an important one for the town to understand and a complex one for the town to understand. Uh, it, uh, Ad Addie May has served us by being extremely organized finding all the facts, clearly communicating them, communicating them to the whole town. And we're impressed that her view is very balanced. She's in favor of affordable housing, but very much against any housing that will compromise the water quality and the health of Sherburn residents and neighbors. So for that reason, we find that uh, she uh, would be a valuable addition to the planning board. She's a very quick study, and she'll learn the ropes very, very fast. We've looked carefully into the, uh, the issue of a possible conflict of interest, because she is the head of a citizens committee concerned with this one project. But uh, we've considered this carefully, because uh, it's important to understand that uh, this would not be a conflict because as a private citizen's committee, uh, she would not be in conflict on the planning board. The planning board has no input at this point into this particular project. And if it did, she would refu recuse herself from that. So we have confidence that she'll be a, a reasoned and balanced uh, voice on the planning board. Thank you. All right, I will now entertain a motion. A <coughs> nomination to be closed and clerk cast one ballot for each John Hickey and Ida May Weiss. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Close, congratulations. And uh, we'll move on now to the uh, Dover Sugar Regional School. Claire Gray is the incumbent for a three year term. Let's see. Yeah. Great Rock Road. I nominate Claire Graham for Regional School. Claire right, Graham has been nominated. There's Claire back there. Thank you. Um, any other nominations for regional school? I will keep it brief in the hour. Um, we're fortunate to have Claire in this position. She brings a wealth of experience, enthusiasm, and the proven ability to work collaboratively with the two communities as well as the uh, regional administration. And I would hope that you would all join me in supporting Claire for this position. Thank you. Motion. Do I hear the motion? So uh, moved. Please vote for Cast One. Claire Graham. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Moving on to Board of Health. Uh, Daryl Beardsley is the incumbent. It's for a three-year term. Are uh, there? Is there a nomination for Board of Health?
motion the nomination to be closed. Clerk cast one ballot for Daryl Beard to it. I need a second that all in favor can say aye. Aye. Everybody opposed, Daryl, once again, congratulations. Thank you. And um, Recreation Commission, Melissa Bowman is the incumbent. Um, we have a situation here where we're going to have two different elections because uh, Ray Weiss had um, resigned in September of last year. Uh, Mike Guthrie, with the full support of his wife, I'm sure, uh, stepping into the, into the breach here for the time being. So let's first vote for the three-year term. Um, and I will entertain a motion. Thanks, Judge. Leo Kavanaugh, to Whitney Drive, the Chairman of Recreation. I would like to nominate Brian O. O'Connell for the three-year term. O. O'Connell has been nominated for the three-year term. Are there any other nominations for the three-year term? Anybody want to say anything on the vote? Yeah. Is Bo here? There he is. Yeah. Thanks, Bo. Bo and his wife, Sarah, have been residents of Sherburne for over 10 years. Uh, they have two children, a uh, daughter in the middle school, and a son who's uh, finishing up his career at Pine Hill Elementary. Uh, he's been a volunteer in the community for a number of years, uh, coaching both soccer and baseball, uh, being a Cub Scout leader, uh, a passionate volunteer for the Gilmer Sherman Education Fund, the Library Fair, and most recently, uh, he and Sarah played a leadership role in the Playground Rebuild. Um, Bo has been um, involved in sports his whole life. Uh, as an athlete himself, he uh, rose to the level of playing soccer at college for Skidmore and was honored to be elected captain in his senior year. He continues that passion on the Sherburne men's over 40 soccer team. Uh, he can be found on Sunday afternoons clearing out the shelves of Ben Gay, the local <laughs> drug store. Um, a uh, healthcare industry executive, uh, he is uh, very schooled in uh, planning, execution, strategy, and will be a welcome addition to the Sherman Recognition. Thanks very much. Uh, entertain a motion, nomination to be closed. Clerk cast one ballot for the ball uh, for the Recreation Commission. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. I see one opposition. No, I said All right, moving on to, um, I believe it's a, it's a one, Whose position are we taking? Race. 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 Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Well, nominations for one. The Okama again, I'd like to nominate Mike Duffy for the one-year position. <laughs> Any other nominations for the one-year position on recreation? Uh, Mike and Jeannie have been residents of Sherburne for over 26 years. They raised both their boys in the Gober Sherman schools and through the youth sports and activities programs. Mike uh, was previously a three-term member of the Recreation Commission. Uh, and when we had a vacancy, he very kindly stepped in to fill that position. And the words of Al Pacino, just when he thought he was out, they pulled him back in. And uh, Mike has agreed to finish out that term in the final year. And his leadership, experience, and love and dedication to the town of Sherman will be a Entertain a motion of nominations to close the quick pass over the ballot from Mike Guthrie for a one year term on the vacation commission. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. As opposed, thank you, Mike. Uh, moving on to the constables, it's a three year term. We have two incumbents, uh, Ron Buckler and Josh Buckler. Katie? Aye. Good evening again, George. I nominate Ron Buckler and Josh Buckler. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Would you like to speak on their behalf? We could have, we could have a rousing happy birthday to Josh. <laughs> I will not bore you with my voice. But uh, no, they've both been doing it for a number of years. And uh, uh, they are, uh, this is their way, or another way of their contributing to the town. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll entertain a motion of nomination to be closed and that uh, Ron Buckley and Josh Buckley are being uh, elected as uh, caucus and meetings. Second, all in favor, please say that. Uh, we do have one more bit of business here. And do remember, Carol is here, and I think she'll be around probably on Monday, too, and tomorrow. If anybody needs to see her nomination papers, that sort of thing.
need to uh, elect the caucus committee for the ensuing year, um, and so I will entertain uh, nominations for that, uh, those positions. It is my honor and pleasure to uh, nominate Janet Walsh. Janet Walsh has been nominated. Is there anybody? Oh, yeah. I am Frank Cooper. I live in Tom and Rose Thank you. Carol Markle, Stony Brook Road. It's my pleasure to nominate Jennifer Bethel. Jennifer Bethel. Very good. Are there any others, Mary Ann? Mary Ann Platt, say I'd like to nominate George Smith, which is a 2017 card. Thank you very much. Are there other nominations? If not, I'll entertain a motion nominated.